good afternoon and welcome to uh, the session that we're going to be looking at uh, Web and Telco 2.0, Making Money Together, question mark. I think uh, where we are in the industry is um, I think Web 2.0 has had an impact in terms of telco's thinking. It's changing uh, some of their models of behavior. And also I think one of the interesting uh, factors that's not really been brought up in the discussions to date, we focus very much on the impact of competition on telcos, on the impact of regulation. But there's another factor that's having an impact on telcos, and that's societal factors. And that's changing how people are behaving with their communication services. Of course, we've heard lots around fixed mobile convergence. Well, actually, that acronym should really apply to fixed mobile conversion, conver sorry, conversion, in that people are moving from their fixed line and using solely their uh, mobile phone. And it's societal factors. In the fact that my address book's there, it's easy and convenient to use. We're also seeing in some markets a major takeoff around mobile broadband. If we look at the UK, where now, for a matter of uh, one pound a day, you can get unlimited broadband access, or you can pay prepaid mobile broadband, we're seeing data traffic grow at phenomenal rates that are causing operators to reevaluate the sort of business models they're considering. And I think that that was something at the, the presentation this morning that uh, Gary Kim brought up around the biggest change is around the uh, business models that operators are evaluating. So I don't want to be basically uh, wasting time in uh, listening to me. We've actually got four panelists here who bring a wealth of uh, experience around some practical implementations of uh, exposing capabilities to application developers and adopting some of those Web 2.0 principles. So the way we're going to work this is basically uh, I'm going to let the panelists introduce themselves and then provide some insight and some of their experiences for five, ten minutes. So what I'll do is actually I'll start over with the culprit at the far side, Francesco, and then work towards me. So Francesco, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Francesco Fracalvieri. I work uh, in uh, Telecom Italia Domestic Mobile Services, but uh, serving Telecom Italia Mobile uh, over the last eight years, I mm, had uh, uh, the privilege to work with all sorts of small companies and venture capitalists and business development firm uh, trying to introduce uh, uh, services and products uh, in order to innovate our portfolio. So I <clears throat> ran into literally hundreds of new ideas, some of them very successful. And uh, most recently, we decided to launch uh, an early adopter program for our, I would say, 36 uh, degree innovators in Italy who would like to have the best consumer electronics experience, the best uh, application experience, and would subscribe on our uh, website, which is apparently similar as a, as a goal uh, to the Google Labs or to the Nokia Beta Labs, but it's a Telecom Italia mobile website, which is actually a first step into the 2.0 approach, letting our customer jointly develop uh, uh, their own space uh, within uh, the mobile services. Uh, my name is Tai Wang. I'm actually with Oracle, the communications vertical group within Oracle. And just for those of you who may not know about Oracle Communications, is actually a vertical industry group that was established uh, about two years ago to focus on communication service providers. So much of you are probably familiar with uh, database technology and some of our middleware, but we've actually invested in a lot of the application companies to form a vertical business unit. Companies like Portal for billing revenue management, uh, Metasol for activation and provisioning, we actually acquired two companies, uh, Net4Call and HotSip for SIP and Parlay capabilities into the network. And then now with our newest addition, BEA, which brings in a small company, uh, brings in middleware for communication service providers. So we're part of the team, uh, well, I'm part of the team that's integrating the BEA products. Um, we work a lot with communication service providers to get their networks ready for Web 2.0 and making their business relevant to Web in a, in a Web 2.0 world. So whether it's uh, exposing network capabilities or charging and billing capabilities or provisioning capabilities or things like presence or messaging, we are actually working a lot with the carriers to make sure that their uh, business is ready for this world. And what we found, and I think you've heard in a lot of the discussions earlier, was that it's really around two dimensions that we've seen out in, in the world. Uh, 
in terms of telco and, and web 2.0. One is the whole dimension of blending. So I think you've heard a lot of the, the panelists talk about blending capabilities, whether it be call control, messaging, presence, whatever it may be. And we see a lot of the APIs being exposed uh, to developers and people are starting to adopt those. Well, what we've seen a lot with our carrier customers has been the, the problem of extending, which is how do I extend it across a one single IT infrastructure that manages things like subscriber profile, security, policy enforcement, charging models. So in, in the world of ISVs gone wild and third parties uh, gone wild with creating services, how do you actually expose those things that the ISVs are looking for? Uh, with the combination of Oracle and BEA, we actually have a lot of third party ISV companies coming to us to give us, give them more tools to build applications. And when we go to them and talk to them about what can telcos bring to you, there's always two things that bubbles up uh, in the ISVs that we talk to. One is, how do I get access to the revenue relationship that a telco has? Because the Googles of the world don't have that revenue relationship. And the second is, how do I get access to the subscriber profile and usage information? Uh, which is ironically enough, the two things that a lot of our telco customers struggle the most with. Because it's very sacred, and oftentimes it's very different systems, and oftentimes it's harder to expose as web services, which is what all the developers would like. So I think in the evolution of telco and web 2.0, we see a lot of the, our customers working through that. And ironically enough, we actually have a lot of our telco customers coming to Oracle and asking a very different conversation, which I find a little bit uh, uh, ironic, is that they're asking us uh, on advice on how to acquire companies. And we, we do a lot of acquisitions uh, within Oracle. And um, we see a lot of our telco customers doing even more because they want to get into new markets, new spaces. So as, as we see the evolution of, our, of the telcos happen, the profile management, security, and the exposing of the networks becomes even more important because those problems are only going to get worse, right? And those challenges are going to have to be addressed now because as we scale the business with our customers, uh, they're going to see a lot more of that pain. And the, fr the quickest we can streamline that pain, the better. Hi, how about Hi, my name is um, Stefan Kunz. I'm with Swisscom. Swisscom, for you, you may not know, is um, the Swiss um, telecom incumbent in Switzerland. We are having um, five, bil five million um, subscribers. Um, we are the largest telecom provider. We're offering fixed mobile line services. Um, we are also in the IT space. We're having also IT outsourcing capabilities, second largest IT outsourcer in Switzerland. And um, actually, I mean, it's about a market share of 65%, which is a kind of a comfortable market share somehow. Um, but it's also kind of a risk with it implied, you know. I mean, growth is, is difficult in a Swiss market because, I mean, considering a population of 7 million, um, there's um, growth. It means actually you have to step either out of your market or you just have to step into a new market in your country, which there are not so many available somehow. So a lot of things are very much on a substitutional base. But at the end, what counts for us is really having a customer stickiness keeping up with innovation and being sticky with our customers. And that's actually where our organization fits in. We are actually here having a small, really a small organization, which is two of us here, and we are doing here business development and, and trend scouting. And actually dealing with these web.0 and telco.0 kind of aspects. And um, one of the um, things that we um, introduced in the last two years, actually I forgot to mention that the organization exists for about seven years and um, what we did in the last two years is actually we um, started initiative